And with us now from Portland, Maine, the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, Congressman Barney Frank, joining us from Tuscaloosa, the ranking Republican on the Senate Banking Committee, Richard Shelby. Congressman Frank, to you first. Uh, on his way out, I ask uh, uh, Mr. Paulson, uh, I said that the Congress may want to add some things to this, uh, maybe a new stimulus package, some limits on executive compensation. Uh, will you be amenable to that? He said, we want this passed clean and quick. Uh, do you think that's possible? Yes. Uh, Secretary Paulson and I have a lot of agreement, but we have a difference on what's clean. Uh, we don't think that uh, trying to stimulate the economy, given the six plus percent unemployment, let's not forget other problems as we focus on this one. I don't think that dirties up the bill. Uh, as to executive compensation, we're going to be asked to buy up the bad debt that's clogged the system. Look, some, some private sector people made some irresponsible decisions because there wasn't adequate regulation. We'll deal with the regulation next year. It would be a grave mistake to say that we're going to buy up the bad debt that resulted from the bad decisions of these people and then allow them to get millions of dollars on the way out. The American people don't want that to happen, and it shouldn't happen. I don't think it slows things down at all. So um, we also, by the way, want to add some language uh, that will slow down the number of foreclosures. It's kind of hard to tell the average American that we're going to continue to have foreclosures that destabilize neighborhoods and deprive cities of revenues they need, but uh, we're going to buy up the bad paper. I do think we have to buy up the bad paper. I think we have a situation where the failure to regulate adequately has allowed some private sector people to put the economy in a hole, and we have to undo that. That's good for the economy, but it's also a direct benefit to some of the people who made the mistakes. All to right. give them some direct benefit and not others would be a grave error. Let's uh, see what Senator Shelby has to say about that. Uh, do you think, uh, will you be willing to add some things on to this, Senator? I, I would. I don't know what the uh, atmosphere will be like uh, when we get back to Washington and get to work on this uh, at the first of the week. But I can tell you this, this is not going to be 700 trillion, um, $700 billion, it's going to be about a trillion dollars at least. And you asked a good question to the Secretary a few minutes ago, Bob, and that is, is this it? Will this be it? And he couldn't answer that it would be. We don't know the end game in this, and I'll tell you what bothers me about this, that I believe that the Chairman of the Fed and the Treasury Secretary Paulson, with all due respect to him, they've been staggering from crisis to crisis. And they haven't even said today that this will end the crisis. He said this will lubricate the financial markets if we take the financial sludge, as we call it, off the books of the banks. But as Congressman Frank said, this doesn't do anything for the homeowner. This is doing something for the banks, and if they get any relief, it'd be incidental. Uh, one of the things that I asked uh, the secretary, I said, you know, this is going to send the deficit into unchartered waters here. Uh, did he think it would be necessary for the next president to have to raise taxes in order to get the funds that will be needed to, uh, to run the government? Now, nobody likes to raise taxes in, when economic times are bad, but uh, what about that, Congressman Frank? Do you think we may be facing some new tax challenges, as the secretary uh, said, because he wouldn't say whether he thought that was going to be necessary. Bob, when I talked about the need for, for, for stimulus being part of this overall approach and, and reducing foreclosures and reducing compensation or restricting it, I think I'm speaking for the great majority of people in my party and many in Congress. Now let me speak individually. I think this strengthens the argument for a surtax on the wealthiest people in this country who are among those who made these mistakes. We are unfortunately a situation, it's almost as if we let them take the economy hostage by not having appropriate financial regulation. We'll deal with that later. But these are the people, and I, I agree with the Secretary, it's not going to ultimately cost all these hundreds of billions. We will recover most of it, maybe all of it. But I do think at this point the people who are making over a million dollars a year, a surtax on their incomes, that's one way to get the people who made these mistakes to contribute to the cost of undoing it. But I, I do stress I'm speaking only for myself here. All right, uh, Senator Shelby, what about that as a Republican? You seem to agree with Congressman Frank that this bill is going to have to include more uh, than what, uh, what the Secretary was talking about here. Also, you say uh, that nobody really knows how much this thing is going to cost. Are we looking at more taxes down the road here? Well, I, I'm, as a Republican, I'm not a taxer, but I can tell you, Bob, when we add an additional trillion dollars to the debt, in other words, the burden of the taxpayer, 
uh, sooner or later there's got to be a, a reckoning as you allude to. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I can tell you, you add a trillion here and a trillion there and you've got a lot more debt on the American people and that's what I'm concerned about. And we've been down this road before through the thrift bailout, cost the American taxpayer billions of dollars. This is the mother of all bailouts, and we don't see the end in it yet. What about this idea of uh, uh, executive compensation and putting some limits on it? Congressman Frank thinks that might be uh, pretty important. How do you come down on that? Well, I have always uh, said, and I believe this, that it should be up to the board of directors of a private corporation to set the compensation of an executive. It shouldn't be Congress's role. On the other hand, if they're government entities, or if they're government uh, guaranteed entities, that's a different story. So what Can about I just this? Say, yes, go ahead, Congressman. Well, I just say this. I, that, we, uh, Senator Shelby and I have some differences on the general principle, although we did agree. By the way, it was specific authority added by the Congress, the administration didn't ask for it, to the bill dealing with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that led to the cancellation of those severance packages. That is, and it's on Absolutely. the principle that Senator Shelby said. Congress said, no, you have to take this over. But I would say this, we're not now talking about a purely private corporation. These are corporations that are offering to us bad debt. They are, they are hoping that we will buy some of that bad debt. I think it's entirely legitimate to say as a condition of buying the bad debt, we want some compensation restrictions. I don't want the federal taxpayer to be at risk for their bad debt, and then the guy who incurred the debt gets tens of millions of dollars on the way out the door. Let me, let me ask you this question. When uh, the chairman of the Fed, Mr. Bernanke, uh, and uh, when Secretary Paulson came up to the Congress, you had a private meeting. I know the chairman of the Banking Committee, Chris Dodd, said there was absolute silence for a while there after they told uh, you all what they saw coming down the road. How bad did they tell you it was going to be, Mr. Frank? Well, first of all, I think we probably ought to commemorate that day when 15 members of Congress sat in absolute silence. You don't get many of those uh, all that often. Um, what they said was, um, uh, and the Secretary says it's not going to be a collapse, and we don't want to unduly panic people, but what we were told, and this is why I'm ready to act, that we had gone beyond the institutions themselves being in trouble. We were reaching the point where people wouldn't be able to get auto loans, where people wouldn't get home loans, where small business wouldn't be able to get the loans to keep their inventory. In other words, what they told us was the contagion here and the depression in the market was such that you were going to see a shutdown of the lending business, not just on, on Wall Street, that people's money market funds would, would diminish, and that's already started to happen, that their pension plans would be in trouble and their retirement plans. So we were told that these would be very dire consequences. Unfortunately, I think accurately, that uh, again, the, the scope of the error that the private sector has, has made, left entirely too much on its own, uh, will reverberate and, and, and cause a very substantial reduction in economic activity. And remember, that comes at a time when we already have an unemployment over 6%. Uh, Even Senator, before Senator, this crisis, can I just say, yeah. we're, on, we're on track to lose over a million private sector jobs this year, and this is going to exacerbate an already bad situation. Senator Shelby, uh, once we get past this, or while this is in progress, are we going to have to have an overhaul of the rules and regulations uh, governing all this? A absolutely, Bob. Uh, I'm going to go back to this briefly. What caused this? What's the root cause of all this? Where we are today? Greed? and lack of regulatory uh, oversight. Let's be honest, the Federal Reserve and the other uh, institutions uh, overlooking our financial system, they didn't know what was going on in these institutions. Uh, if they did, we wouldn't be where we were today. And I remember about a year ago, the Fed chairman, with all due respect to Chairman Bernanke, uh, he said, basically, we had this contained. I fear that this is not contained and we will repeat it again if we don't have massive, tough regulatory reform in the next Congress. All right. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you very much. Can I just for, say yes, amen Yes, and to we that. have 20 seconds here. All right. Let me just say, being Jewish, I don't ordinarily do this on the Sunday morning, but I just want to say an amen to Senator Shelby. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. It was worth the extra time to hear you say that, Congressman. Thank you. Back in a minute.